Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to part three of our video series where I'm kind of making a bridge between Grasshopper, Rhino and Unreal Engine 5. And we're bridging it with an Excel spreadsheet. So that's, that's kind of exciting. Uh, for today's session, we're going to be focusing on optimization of things, optimization of what we've done so far, and trying to see how far can we push this workflow um, before break, start, things start breaking and not working. I have done initial tests and, oh, you're in for a treat. <laughs> it's going to be fun. So let's actually look at a few things. So first off, this is where we left off last time. Right? Our little character. Oops, that's a... And you can see that our character and the, the structure in which it lives is pretty large structure. But also, the frame rate is not that great. Oh, you can't see the frame rate. Um, just a second. If you want to see like debugging stats on your screen, you type in stat FPS in the bottom console. Stat FPS. Enter. Now here, you can see the frame rate. 120 in my case. And then if you want to see more, uh, you can more stats you can type in stat unit or units i don't remember probably stat unit yeah there we go so this basically tells you where it's clogging up you know what what is making your frame rate to drop so if i press play now you can see that my frame rate and my uh, like everything is dropping to red except the draw right but basically my frame rate is at 16 frames per second and the thing that is clogging it up is mostly game and the GPU. So something is wrong with the, with the script. You'll see what. So we are going to be optimizing that to try and get the best performance we possibly can. And I do have a little bit of a sneak peek for you. This is my testing bench, so to say. This is my character that I use for testing. You've seen it. I don't need to introduce you to, to the character. And if I press play, now, I mean, that's, that's definitely a, much more elements, right? We are sitting at 96, 97 frames per, per, per second. Um, with everything in the in the green. Keep in mind, I am recording a video. I have two Unreal engines opened up at the same time, and I have Rhino, Rhino Grasshopper script running. Right? <clears throat> we're still at 90 frames per second. If I were to show you this structure, you know, it's a pretty intense structure. Okay, this is what we're going to be doing, and we're going to build an even bigger one. <clears throat> Apologies, my voice is crack, crack a lacking, <laughs> crack a lacking. All right, so the f uh, first things first, let's look at what we can do with Rhino and what we can kind of build in Rhino. So um, I have changed the point cloud here just a little bit um, to a new structure because I was tired of the old one and I just press place block here this is the new structure which with which we are going to be testing things um, and if I were to show it to you oh I can't um, I will show it to you just in just a second in Unreal but that is the first thing that I changed from our previous uh, tutorial second thing is I build a bunch of data dams because once you reach like a thousand elements, two thousand elements, like this system here starts um, costing you time. Um, so you want to build uh, like a, <clears throat> a dam that doesn't let this part calculate until you want it to calculate, right? So I believe, yeah, uh, the, these data dams currently are holding 
with holding information so i'm just going to press play 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 i assume at this point you kind of know how a bit data down works so i'm not going to explain it too much and also play here there's a data dam here as well right so now it's streaming all of the info uh, let's just see where my excel lives here cmc to unreal engine excel that's great let's take a gander at it in our um our main file here it is cmc to unreal engine excel right click reimport bam reimport it press play run away from it and here it is a small little structure right that's that's good enough um for 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 the testing purposes we're also with a small structure we're at 60 frames per second so honestly this is running slower than the pink one that i showed just just now all right so back to grasshopper this is basically what we have i haven't changed anything else in grasshopper everything else is the same we will talk about this part in a in a short while but nothing has been changed besides that right so now uh, let's talk about unreal instead right the way this works is uh, right now the, the the way this script works uh, or the blueprint works is that it creates a copy of the actor which is this element blueprint right this is an actor and i can place it right here so that you can see for for every element it makes a copy of this and it basically chooses you can see this is kind of a collection of all of the elements placed in the same position and it chooses the correct one right from all of these um and and it does that for every single element i believe copying the blueprint makes the game lag out and that is my kind of initial idea so we're going to let's get rid of that we're going to change a few things first of all i don't want the blueprint to be only built or the structure to be only built when i press play i want to see it on the screen all the time right because it makes no sense uh to just have an empty screen and then only see it built once in a while uh, after you pressed play um so we, we will need to migrate a few things if you double click on your element bp on your blueprint you access it right this is where it created an array and it got the item according to its index and it sets its location and rotation right and it does that under event begin play right so that that's why we don't see it uh, before that's why we don't see it in the editor we only see it when the game has begun so the first thing that we're gonna need to do is to construct it not in the event graph not as a, a, an event that happens in the world but rather in a construction script you can see here these different graphs right so that's the first thing that we're uh, we're going to be working on right um i think it would be much more clear if i just took all of this and just deleted it let's just get rid of it let's build uh, build it anew right so that it's not confusing so now our element blueprint has n nothing in that i can even do this i think yeah let's do that just delete everything in the event graph completely empty construction script um let's keep this the construction script starting point and honestly let's go to viewport yeah sure let's delete all of these as well all of the elements you select them on the left hand side not the scene root though keep that but all of the named elements and you delete those who cares right <clears throat> so we're starting afresh um then 
I will go back to my map and also I'll go to my um, level, um, the level blueprint, which you can access by clicking on this little icon here and choosing open level blueprint. And here I'm going to say that, no, 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 we don't read it. We don't read the Excel spreadsheet in the level. We will rather read it um, via the blueprint in the blueprint right so it's not global it's localized just for the blueprint so i'm going to probably get rid of the make transform i'll get rid of the spawn actor element and i'll get rid of the break just these three get a data table row names for each loop and get a data table row uh, for for this excel spreadsheet right so i'm going to control x these three so i just cut them and i'll go to my element blueprint right to its construction script so it, uh, we're, we're talking about this guy element blueprint its construction script right here and i'll paste it Control v there we go so now as the it, you don't even need to start the game for it to read the Excel spreadsheet. Well, you need to connect it like that so that it starts reading the Excel spreadsheet. All right, so we have that going on. Uh, basically, that blueprint now reads. Then uh, our output row, we still kind of want to get all of the outputs from it. So I'm just going to say output row drag out of it break and i'll break the struct into multiple outputs index location rotation great so we have that uh, go going for us then that index that we have um, we will need to use it to add copies of the elements that we need um, according to what kind of index they have right so we will be using this to not um, make a copy of a static object but rather make an instance of a static object right so i will just create a new um, node that's called add instance add instance static mesh component right this one and if I hover my mouse, you can even see what it says. Creates a new component and assigns ownership to the actor. Um, basically, wait, sorry. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so it doesn't t tell you this here, but uh, the instance static mesh is much, much faster than uh, just uh, making a copy of a static mesh. Right, it's just faster because it's like a digital twin. Um, doesn't matter. So we're going to add instance static mesh like that. Then we will say that once data row is found, it should add the instance, right? And the transform of that instance is going to be well. First of all, let's let's see. Uh, first of all, we need to choose which elements are added at what time, right? So we need to choose the correct elements. We don't have anything here anymore. So we need to create a few um, instant, instanced static meshes. Uh, that's a tongue twister. Okay, so under viewport here, under default scene root, I will choose to add, right? Add. And here I will type in, in something with instance, instance static mesh, not hierarchical, just instance static mesh like that. And I'll just call it zero one, right? We have ourselves uh, an instance, uh, sorry, instance static mesh. Then you probably can see this right hand side here. Uh, let me just double check if, if my camera is not blocking it. Just a second. Yeah, it's fine. Um, basically, 
0, 1 here, the instant static mesh, needs to have a reference to an actual static mesh, right? So that static mesh can be chosen from here. And if I just expand this, I can find 0, 1 right here. Like that. So now, basically, we have one instant static mesh, and it's uh, the 0, 1 one, right? Then I can just select this and Control c Control v to make, make 0, 2, Control v 0, 3, and so on, right? So I'm going to make the 14 elements, uh, like 14 sockets for the elements. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, 14. There we go. They're kind of all messed up. doesn't matter. So we have 0, 1, then 0, 2. This is going to be boring, but for each of these, I need to select the correct mesh. And it's that's why numbering matters so much. <laughs> so 0, 1, 0, 0, 3. No, sorry, that's 0, 4. Did I already do 0, 3? I did. 0, 5. 0, 6. 7. So I'm just assigning the meshes here, right? As, as what we did before uh, in the previous tutorial. Except that now, 0, 8. Except that now they are not... Um, they're basically like blocks, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of you are kind of, you know, CAD language. So they're like blocks rather than just copies of the same thing. Um, 0, 9, 0, 10, 11, where's our 11? There we go. Uh, should cut this out, but I will not be able to fish it out, out of my one hour tutorial. 13, just skip ahead. Did you know that you can increase the playback rate of your YouTube video that you're watching by just going to settings, bottom right corner, settings and playback rate, make it two times faster. Then I'm going to wrap on your screen. That's fun. Okay. I feel like I, I think all of these are now referencing the correct element. So we have initially created a bunch of blocks or instances. In this, in this case, then for YouTube map, sorry, for the map, we don't do anything. We just compile and save and close it. Yeah, we don't need it for, for the construction script. I mean, of our blueprint, J just to be clear, we are now working on just a single blueprint. Everything else is completely empty. Our map doesn't have anything. Uh, in it, there is no other blueprints. There is only this element blueprint that we're working on, and we're only working on the construction script. The event graph is empty. We are really minimizing everything to bare, completely bare minimum, just so that we're on the same page. You're not missing anything if you're thinking that, oh, I should have like a second blueprint open or something like that. All right. So now we have all of these and we're, we're basically going to do the same thing, right? We're going to get all of these in here, just select them and drag them in, right? You just select all of them with shift, click and drag, you get them. Guess what you need to do then? Wonderfully align them according to their names. Very important, or else you're going to have a bad time later. Mm, 10, 11, 12. Okay. And once you're done that, you make an array out of them, right? So you can just right click, type in make array. This one, make array. Add the first pin. And, and just let's create a bunch of pins here by just clicking the add pin tool, not tool, button, plus sign, whatever. And you just kind of connect them in the correct sequence, right? From one going down. 
two more like that bam 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 mm? bam bam this is basically an array in this case is basically a list it's just a list of things right so from this list uh, in grasshopper we have list item in here we we have uh, the command called get so from this array i'll drag out a line like that and i'll type in get get in brackets a copy like that get it asks us for you know, what's the index well that's our element index right so we get the element index and we connect it to self wait Instance static mesh component object reference target actor object reference. Oh, that's weird. Uh, it should um, shouldn't be that. Oops, sorry. Uh, shouldn't be that. Let me just double check. Okay. Maybe we can do... Wait, sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll just think for a second. So let's get rid of this. If, if, if you're getting problems with connecting get to the target, let's get rid of this and let's create one more. Um, add instance. Yeah, there we go. Add instance and then just choose what, whatever you want. <clears throat> add instance 01, uh, 010, whatever. Which one of, uh, whichever one of these you want and then get rid of zero one for this and instead connect the get there we go then don't forget to connect row found to the um how is this called like initial executor uh, to the execution uh input like that um the reason why this doesn't didn't work is that because uh, add instance didn't know uh what's the target right so i think we were we would be able to change it but might as well just make it this way and then instance transform here we will just drag this out and we'll just say make transform make transform bam location rotation scale that's great for location that is going to be uh, make vector like that for rotation is going to be make rotator right there in the bottom like that then you straight up connect x y z x y z and that ladies and gentlemen should be it so we compile this we save this on our youtube map we take this and drag it in <laughs> and there it is there it is i'm happy we press play and we see lovely lovely 120 frames per second wait let's see if we can jump on it uh where's our player start we find player start this is where our play, uh, player spawns when you when we press play i'm just going to spawn our little character on top of this structure like that like that should be should be good i think it's gonna be good let's plus play Hoopa! yay oh it dropped through okay so if this happens that means your collisions are not uh accurate enough that's fine we will fix that um, and I think it's not reading the collisions that well. Well, in this case, for this one, it reads them quite well. I'm, I'm looking at the, how, how the feet are touching the, the element. But for element type 2, it's really struggling 
Whoa. Now we're stuck. <laughs> okay, let's stop playing. Um, so this works, uh, kind of right so now let's make a few a few modifications first off uh, let's fix the collision so what's up with element type 2 let's go to my stuff elements type 2 open it up let's see um nothing initially from what i see here is bad i will type in collision to check it says use complex collision as simple. That's what we've set up last time. So this works. So let's um, close, not close, but cancel the search. And then here where it says fallback triangle percent, see how it says 0%? Nah, man, we're gonna use 100%. So how do I show you this? 0%, if I show this to you with a wireframe and i start zooming out see how it's breaking the triangles oh i can't zoom out no i can i can see the triangles are breaking this is nanite this is how it's it's reducing the triangles according to how far away you are from the structure so this is basically how aggressive it is i believe uh, don't quote me on that but i think fallback triangle percent is how aggressive it is 100 percent will make it less aggressive question mark i think so still pretty good you can see it here right really simplifies things so and also if if i show you it with lit um preview you can't really tell that it's reducing the polygon count that's the beauty of nine nanite so fallback triangle percent i increase this to 100 hit save hit close hit play let's find element type 2 bam nice now we are gucci walkable slope is very low though so I want to fix that as well, because I can't, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just sliding down. I can't climb up these slopes. So I'm going to go to my, um, uh, maybe player start will help out. No, player start will not help out. So unfortunately we need to find our character blueprint and we need to say that our character is able to move up a pretty large so we will make it pretty and a lot of elements in just a second bear with me bear with me so first of all make the character be able to walk through this structure um in my content browser under characters um i will try to find well maybe it's under third person blueprints yeah there it is okay great great we're we're here we're here so under content under third person under blueprints there is this blueprint third person character not game mode the character one you double click that this is your character blueprint the way it works and the way it's it's kind of reacting to things and so on right and we drag out from the right hand side we drag out this menu here and basically i think all we need to do is just find something with slope nope walk nope oh no oh no uh, let's let's see let's see let's see i i really think i'm i'm in the correct correct place am i not is it under collision uh, okay if, if this doesn't work i have a plan second plan character movement yeah there we go okay uh we're we're back we're back so character movement right here on the left hand side you choose character movement 
and then you will get the menus of how it moves right so here you can change a bunch of different things you know like the gravity how how much it's uh how much gravity uh affects it and so on uh in our case we need to change the maximum step height i feel like so it's it basically can't climb up higher than 45 centimeters with a step right so i'm gonna change this to let's 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 try i could climb up on a yeah I, I could climb up on the table and the table is like what uh 80 no it's not 80 it's, it's gonna be like 60 centimeters high yeah so let, let's increase this to 60 like that and then for 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 the slope uh where it is where is it where is it where is it Okay, let's just search here. Slope. Okay, cool. Walk. There's still no slope here. No, no. Ugh. Walkable floor angle. I'm, I'm stupid. So that, that's how it's called. Walkable floor angle. Here, we just changed this to also like 60 degrees. Mm. 61 i know it's very very <laughs> very steep but let's just say our uh, character is a super superman right then we compile save well in this case super lady super, superhuman uh, uh, we compile we save we close don't forget to compile save close play now you should be able to eh. yep walk up all of the slopes up and down wherever you want to go he it's it's weird it really doesn't like that slope but well it's able to walk up all right so that that's that's how you kind of control the accessibility of it for everything that you will have problems with collisions um make sure that you go to that particular element and you change the settings of that particular champion you will change the settings of that particular element um so that it doesn't so that nan nanite is not as aggressive as uh as what was described right i can't fall through the hole here <laughs> it's, really, it's it's really trying though okay so that's fun I'm having fun. Okay, let's stop having fun. Or actually, no, let's continue having fun, but uh, with a different thing. So now we have everything working. Uh, it's basically only this little uh, script here, the, the, the blueprint, element blueprint, which drives everything. And of course, the Excel spreadsheet. Um, let's change the material of this because the material is very boring so for elements where it says cool glossy i'm just going to open it up and i'm going to change a few settings did, did i do it too fast well slow me down if i did it too fast um under param where it gives us a color i'm just gonna change the color to beautiful pink something like that bubblegum Maybe a bit brighter. There we go. Then for specular, I'm gonna say uh, sc scalar, scalar parameter. And here I'm gonna just say the default value should be 0 0.5 uh, slider minimum should be zero slider maximum should be one uh, and i'm just gonna call this parameter um spec specular right spec then for roughness i'm going to create a 
a separate one ram or not param sorry scalar 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 parameter and call it rough not that's not how you write rough but sure and also default value 0 0.5 slider minimum 0 slider maximum 1 great this is our master um master blaster <laughs> uh master um material right i'm gonna save this cool glossy material here it's gonna take a while yeah there we go uh, it's now saved i'll go to my element blueprint and for each of these elements i will change its material oh it's actually all of them are cool glossy now so wait we need to do one thing uh where it says cool glossy now this is my master material so if i double click on it it opens up this grasshopper looking thing um instead i will right click on it on the material and i'll choose create material instance like that create material instance and i'll call it um shiny paint whatever so basically this material is not if i double click on it you can see this is how it looks like let me make it smaller so that it's not in the way uh, this is how it looks like and it's basically using the master material the cool glossy material as its parent but it also enables you to change the param the scalar settings here so for instance here i can change the color of it right to whatever color i want cancel that i can change the specular i can change the roughness right so i can make this anything i anything i want which is very nice so you basically the way you work with unreal engine is you create master materials and then you apply um like variables to them uh, introduce variables and then everything else is derived from the master materials you can make multiple different copies of the master material with different settings right so i can have a uh, shiny paint and then i can make an another instance and call it shiny dark paint this is just going to be an example right shiny dark paint and this one i can just say well it's a darker version of this one right so now i have two copies of this except that one of them is darker and let's say more glossy or yep, more glossy like that so that that's how it works let me delete this uh let's just use the shiny paint one uh let's go to element blueprint and now we will select all of these um instances or instance references and here under materials for them i have all of them selected i will change this cool uh, from cool glossy to something about shiny shiny paint there we go i'll use that i'll hit compile hit save go back to my map this is now updating in real real time so now if i open up my shiny paint material right and i start messing up messing around with it i want this to be red this whole the uh, whole thing changes to red blue green and so on right you you get a you get the idea so i can uh for this one i will keep it pink but i can also zoom in here closer like that and i can change the roughness of it to for for it to be more glossy and just to look like uh, how it would look like when it's glossy and how it looks like when it's fully matte right and if it is quite glossy can i change the specular highlights of it right bump them up bump them down so it's very interactive that's what i'm getting at 
Okay, so that's our uh, bubblegum pink object. I, I think it's a little bit too intense in terms of in terms of color. Something like that, maybe. There we go. And now for the ground, I'm just gonna... Let's create a new Create Material Instance from Cool Glossy. Call it Shiny Paint Blue. Like that. Roughness, Specular, Params. And this one will be blue. Um, just drag and drop it onto my uh, surface. Here. Um, and actually let's make the surface much bigger like a hundred by a hundred by a hundred scale there we go and I will make it a little bit less rough a little bit more reflective not too much because I, I mean I can do it this way and you can already see the reflection here but it's I, I think it's too much so just something 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 like that just a tiny bit blue press play we have ourselves a nice looking <laughs> material okay we will work on materials later now um, let's see if we can work with the fog a bit so i have here exponential height fog uh, we can increase, decrease it. Let's increase it and let's see if there is like a something, something shadows. Yeah, volumetric fog. There we go. So we get the, the, the rays of light. Like that. Inside of our structure. I think this is too much. So fog density, I'll change this to like 0 0.1. Let's just see on the outside. Yeah, that seems to be a-okay. -okay. Maybe even too much. 0 0.05. Yeah, something like that. Just very, very soft, you know, fog for, for, for volumetric lighting. Still at 120 frames, though, which is nice. Um, we save this and then we go to Grasshopper to break this, <laughs> break this apart. So you, uh, at this point, you, you, you kind of know how, how the Grasshopper script works, right? I can kind of mirror this to the side and then take this and, uh, copy this up 4,000 like that. Let's just do thousand here. Cell so dupe. Get rid of that. Okay, so we we have much more points now. Actually, let's make even more. Like that. It's gonna be very repetitive, but that's fine. Set multiple reset the, the calculation and now it's going to go to town um, cr creating those right so we need to wait a bit basically it's going to create uh, here we can already see how many elements that we're going to have 663 it's going to create a 663 elements. Bam, it's done. If I press play here, you can see what, what's the structure that we're getting. It's going to look nice. Um, I'm going to press the data tree, uh, sorry, the data dam play buttons on this side and also on this side so that this table updates. Once it's updated, uh, we just go to my stuff, right click on the Excel spreadsheet, re-import it. Then you need to go to element blueprint here and compile it again. 
And that's it. You get a structure. A pretty badass structure as well, honestly. <laughs> I love this. Okay, let's uh, let's play in this and then we will see how far, how much we can break this. It's gonna be exciting. Okay, um, let's move our character above the structure. By the way, you can change the camera speed here and you can just increase it to 8 and then you zoo you're then a, a very fast boy and then change it back to normal okay push it down should be fine let's play 120 frames per second by the way just works just works inside yay oh no I fell through <laughs> I fell through we so there there's our structure cool huh tell me that it's cool tell me in the comments <laughs> okay now now let's get rid of all of the points because, I mean, just copying them, uh, sure, that's nice, but it's faster to just make it in, in Grasshopper, isn't it? Right, so I have this little script here, and uh, we can build it ourselves uh, re real fast, because it's nothing special. So I'm just gonna, actually, I'm just gonna delete it, and let, let's, uh, let's build it ourselves. So first things first, I want a bunch of points, right? So I'll construct point here. I'll just make a grid, right? So construct point for the X and Y direction. I will use series of numbers like that and like that, right? And my series, uh, that step size is going to be, you know, the thousand units that we keep using, thousand centimeters, right? That's our step size. And you can see that it's being smart. It creates this kind of a diagonal line. <clears throat> so this point is zero zero. This point is zero a thousand. This point is zero two thousand. Um, or sorry, z zero zero thousand thousand two thousand two thousand three thousand three thousand and so on. It, it interpolates. So we need to right click on the x input and choose to graft it so that it applies uh, for for each for each x it applies ten y movements if that makes sense well in this case it's 10 because here the count is 10 right so i'm going to change the count to i don't know like let, let's do 50. kablamo 50. looks like that um then we want to move these points up also with series of numbers and i'll just reuse this so we're going to make a cube that is just made out of points right so i'm gonna take these and i'm just gonna move them up oops move them up right click on the point output here flatten move everything into one list and then choose the move g input here and graft it separate everything out into uh, their own little branch because now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving them in z along with, with the same series right like that so now we have a triple array of points i think there's like box array isn't there box array yeah i'm just stupid you could just use the box array doesn't matter get a grid of points here um i'll flatten all of them out and basically i have 125,000 points. I think that's a little bit too many points, but we'll see. Sure, maybe, maybe, maybe it's gonna work out. Then, um, we can create, like I, I have this show selected. I have these two spheres that I used before uh, to separate out what I want, um, separate out the points that I want 
And I can kind of, yeah, I can kind of show you this with the spheres. Let's think. Um, do we do the sphere bit? Well, first of all, it's honestly too many. Let's do 20. How many points are there? 8,000. We'll see if it works with around 8,000 points and then we will keep increasing it. So perhaps, oh, I know. Let's do a Taurus. Taurus, top view, bam, bam, something like that. Should be good. Like that. And let's just make it vertical. Why not? Right? So it just makes a torus for us. A torus for us. Hmm. Anywho. Um, I will now ask our basically get rid of all of the points that are inside or outside of the torus. So in B reps, point in B reps, because we might want to use two toruses, right? Uh, so I'm just going to say point in B reps. Uh, the B reps are, in this case, only one B rep, the torus shape, like that. And the po points to test with are the points, right? Like that. We get the output. Oops, it's my bad. We get an output, and I'm go just going to say um, cull pattern. I'm, uh, the, the output is basically true or false statements. Is, is the torus inside, or sorry, is the point inside or outside of our shape? So the shape needs to be closed for this to work. Um, and with that true or false statement being used as a pattern, I can trim away or color away all of the points that are outside of the torus, right? So now if I hide everything and only have the cull, you can see the nice little torus shape here. One thing to note is that um, if you now run the script through this, it's going to freak out because you don't, you're not anchoring the bounding box of the point cloud to 0, 0, 0. It needs to be anchored. Very important that it's anchored very very important so i'm going to you, you can either do you can either add a point to it like that if you want to and then just add it to the collection because that will force a bounding box to start from zero 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 or you can just move the whole thing to zero 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 it doesn't matter which one you use uh, which method you use in my case In my case, I will just add, yeah, construct point. I'll just construct a point at 0, 0, 0 and merge it into the list like that. And that's it. We have 676 points. Let's see what we get. Oh, yeah, yeah, I for, forgot to mention, forgot to mention. Um, or actually, yeah, sure, uh, I will mention it later. Let's see what we get. I'll connect that to my points input. I will run the script again from, from, the, from the start. It's going to go through 1,156 voxels. So that's how many geometries it's going to create, how many elements it's going to place. And we'll, we'll, we'll see what we get from there. We're already third way through so it's gonna not gonna take a, a long time i will start pausing the video for um once we really go to like large structures because that might take you know like five minutes to to go through and and then choose the correct elements to be placed let's just check how it's how it's looking A little bit boring, isn't it? It's just using element type 5 everywhere, where, where it's flat. Well, it is what it is.
Okay, so that's that's our structure. A donut. Blender Guru. Hello. <laughs> donut? No? Yes? Maybe? Play, play, play. Play. Uh, we, we transfer all of the information here. Unreal Engine. Reimport the Excel spreadsheet. Compile it. And then just make it make the camera a bit faster i'm not even gonna play in this there's our donut you know the blender gurus donut tutorial i i, I think i win it Ooh, i got lost there for a second I think uh, that this would this would win as a pretty damn cool donut. Anyway, how to make it more interesting? And also note how the point cloud inside here, also 120 uh, frames per second, by the way. Note how the, uh, the the structure is hollow here, and the reason why it's hollow is actually pretty interesting. If you have a voxel that is surrounded by four points, or not four, but all eight points of the voxel is are being used, then it's going to constitute this as an empty space, right? No, no element is going to be placed. So since this is all fully used up by points, the inside of the store is shape, it's just simply ignoring it and, and not, not using it. So let's make it more interesting. For this, for this merge, first of all, let's make it bigger. I, I feel like we need to make it bigger because we're still at 120 frames per second while recording. So let's make it three times. No, let's make it four times bigger. So making it four, Doubling this would make it eight times bigger. So let's do 30. I, I think that's going to be closer to four times bigger. And then scale or, or show selected. Let's get our torus in here. Let's look at the grid with which we're dealing. Um, go, go in here. And let's just scale scale it up. Oh, that's not lagging too much, so it's fine. Scale it up like that. That's actually... No, let's make it even bigger. Let's do like 50. Yeah. That's gonna be cooler. Kablamo. Yeah, something like that. I know I'm not using all of these points, but whatever. We'll figure something out with them later. So now, if I hide that and hide the torus. Oh, <laughs> show selected. The torus needs to move up, up, up. There we go. Now we have the full torus. Okay, so now as I have the torus here, um, we will still have the same problem of it uh, of the inside being completely hollow because it's completely surrounded. Uh, like every voxel inside is going to be completely surrounded with points. So I'm going to create a random reduce node. And I'm going to randomly delete the points from this collection so that it basically uh, the structure can bend inwards and we can make it like a cave system inside. It's going to be sweet. So reduction number of items to remove. Uh, we can just say, um, give me the list length of all of the points. So here we are dealing with 11,000 points. And just remove, like divide it by, or multiply it 
multiplied by 0 0.5 or let's say 0 0.72 that's what we get and this is how many points uh, it should remove right so we take all of them we and and we're basically going to remove 72 percent of them like that okay so that's too many um so let's reduce only 30 percent around 30 percent of the points here plug that into our point component okay so now that's lagging <laughs> oh my god no 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 oh no 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 <laughs> let's see um how, how's my how's my ram looking like actually ram is fine ram is at 12 gigabytes like a laptop ram issue what was crashing it oh the closest point one uh gotcha 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 so it's it's freaking out due to the closest point that is fine actually so we just reset this whole thing um i can actually kind of look at it bam 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 Let's bake out a few blocks. Oh, that's going to be an insane structure. And by the way, see how many polygons there are, right? For, for each of these elements. Like, it's not like the elements are very low, low resolution, but I'm amazed at how, how well this handles. All right, so undo that. And now, now I am most definitely going to leave this to calculate because it's going to place 14,500 elements. Well, better go big, huh? So I'm going to stop the recording here and we'll, we'll continue on once it's done. Bam, we're back. So that took a, a hot minute uh, to do, but we, we have it. We have it running. So, of course, why is this? Then that was weird. But of course, now we need to transfer all of the data through here. Just double check. Why is it only... Oh, right, right, data dam. I'm stupid. Now it's not 800. Now it's 5,400. So it's not going to be 11,000 holes, but it's going to be 5,400 elements. Still, pretty large chunk of elements. So I assume this is already written in the Excel spreadsheet. So let's go to Unreal Engine. Let's go to my stuff. Right-click, re-import too few cells on row 3445 okay re-import huh that is strange let's investigate uh, there open up the spreadsheet it said 3445 and so on yep that most definitely is too few cells okay sure close that go back into rhino scroll 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 yep and here it's not push being pushed through so what's up with that and what is being pushed through? Those are the index, element index, and the rotations. So the transforms are not being pushed through. I think we can... Um, 
feels like we all, all we need to do is just trigger the transforms to do it again. Yeah. So let's let's do it this way. I'm going to disconnect this. Connect this. And then I'll try to figure out why the hell is there 8,000 elements being passed through here, through this data stream. Is this bugged? Is it possible to... Okay, let's create a relay here. Disconnect this from the relay. Reconnect this. Press play. Are you 8,000 now? No, now it's 5,000. Don't ask me, I have no idea. That was a bug, now it should be fine. Now it is indeed fine. Let's go back to here, right click, re-import. Re-import it successfully, no problems whatsoever. Okay then, um, it's, it's, uh, with, with that amount of data, it wasn't as smooth, sure. Let's compile it to see, compiles immediately frame rate is <laughs> the frame rate is still at 120 frames per second by the way we haven't dropped a single frame but now this whole structure is just a maze of elements where's our guy uh player start Oh, on, on, on the floor. Great. Really? Player start is... No, player start is not on the floor. Player start is right there. Why the hell did it start the... Oh, it, because it's intersecting? Probably because it's intersecting, huh? Um, we will move our character up, 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 up. Up to the side. That seems to be a okay. Yep, let's press play. Let's see. <laughs> what a view. What a view. All right. So here we're on, on, on the top of this structure. Let's jump down. Wait for, for the camera to catch up with the brightness. No, well, no worries. We have another part of the, uh, of the donut to access. That was a trap. So we just keep falling down. And finally, we're here. Oh, and that's our little single point right there. Uh, zero, zero, zero coordinate. So as you can see, uh, you can do a pretty damn large structure with this. Right? And still not lag out your computer. Holding down the Alt key, I'm gonna make a copy of this. Hundred thousand, and I'm gonna rotate this. Let's make make the camera faster. I'm gonna rotate this. I'm gonna move it. Whoop here here move it up to here and we finally broke below a hundred thousand elements with something like this let's press play figure out where the hell we are Oh, there, there's the, there's the structure. No, there's the structure. Hmm. 
We 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 yeah. And we fell in inside and bam floor. There we go. That is that. We have ourselves a donut. Crispy little donut here. This is it for this tutorial. I'm uh, I'm happy with the with what we managed to to achieve. I feel like this is uh, this is gonna be something real good. Um, we're not done. We're not even close to being done. There's going to be more parts to this. Um, but as it is right now, the structure, um, the, the meat of it all is finished. Now we're just going to keep making it pretty, prettier and prettier. And we're going to establish a pretty damn cool script in, on Grasshopper end to not just make donuts, but to actually make um, informed decisions according to light and according to whatever means whatever rules uh so that the structures that we build are are logical right uh, or not necessarily necessarily logical but they're derived from a set of rules rather gen than just a random boolean difference or not boolean uh, random reduce of a point cloud if that makes sense probably doesn't <laughs> You'll see. You'll see in the next one. Um, as per usual, all files are available to Patreon supporters. 80% um, of you who are watching you are not subscribed to the channel. 80%. What the hell? What the hell? What? I've never seen numbers that low or high, depending on how you look at it. 80% is really bad. So please subscribe. And uh, if you want the files and you can't be bothered to follow along, Patreon is the best way to do it. We have a Discord server as well, where we kind of investigate what we can do further with the channel and what kind of uh, tutorials we can build up. And just th there's also a nice community telling, kind of giving show and tell of, of what they're doing with Grasshopper and so on. So sharing the projects, sharing the problems, it's nice. So. If you're a Patreon, you get access to that as well. All right, we're done with this one. We have ourselves a donut. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>